So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And it was just incredible. And so since then, I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test. There's no way to know. And you can't just crapshoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of, exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios, right? So yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about higher coaching. This is my coaching system. And I get a lot of questions because it's not just training and nutrition. We do that. I love training and nutrition, obviously, but we also do more. We do personal development and the way that's delivered is a 90 day personal development program that you go through with me when you work with me. So it's a video course with questions for you to deep dive in yourself for the first 90 days of working with me. Now that comes as part of a morning routine. I am really big on the morning routine and you ask any of my clients, I will push you on that because it's life changing. So we start with meditation and then we do gratitude and then that personal development program. That's our deep dive psychologically. And after the 90 days, you go to the next level, you start doing what I'm doing currently. And it's a lot of strategic goal setting. And it's really, really honestly, miraculous what's happening, not only in my life, but in my clients' lives. Like it brings me to tears when I get on calls with them. I'm like, do you see yourself? Like, do you see what you're doing? That is so cool. So anyway, that is um, for me, the bread and butter of my coaching. I love it so much. Also though, in regards to your body, I also like to go deep dive and see what might be holding you back. So that's where all the biohacking side comes in. We do a physiological deep dive as well. So we do blood testing, hair mineral testing, DNA testing, body composition, or a ring. Um, so your heart rate variability, your sleep cycles. Do you have any deficiencies? Do you have issues with sleep you didn't even know about? Let's find out, you know? So that's how I approach things in higher. There's more. We do prizes every month, Nikes, Lulu's, all my favorite products and foods to keep you motivated, to keep those habits up. We do three Zoom calls a week so you get support. We have a private Facebook group. We're all vibing and, and cheering each other along the way. We get raw and real and honest. And it's just, yeah, it's like I created my life and I created my life the way I like. And I like to deep dive with a bunch of bad A people that really want to optimize their lives. And it's an honor for me to serve them in that so I just thought I would tell you about it because I don't know if I talk about it quite enough. So if you're looking for that, if you're like wanting the next level in your body and also in your life, truly, that's what we're doing. So uh, seeking bad A's <laughs> to join higher. I do have some spots open. It is limited. I can only handle so many clients at a time. But if you would like to find out if it's a good fit for you, you can go to my website, taragarrison.com, and you can request a call and we can see if, if it's a great fit for you. And yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you guys about Hire so you could get a little glimpse into what I'm doing on the daily. And if you're looking for something a little more self-guided, I do have my Keto In and Out program on my website. So you can either do a small taste and try it for eight weeks, or you can go a full year. That baby is comprehensive. There is a video of every recipe, video of every exercise. 
there's a 60 day course teaching you how to do keto or 30 days of keto and then 30 days of bringing back the carbs, FAQ video library, Facebook group, like all of that. So if you're more of like the self guided person and you just want stuff planned for you, that is also an option on my website. It's taragarrison.com. I'll link it all in the show notes and all right, we'll go ahead and get into our episode. Hey guys, today's episode is going to be a little different. It's just me and it's audio only. So if you're watching on YouTube, sorry for the blank screen, but I'm I'm actually just driving in my car right now and just decided to record this off the cuff on my phone. I want to report on my experience competing in a, I guess, bodybuilding competition. It's in the bikini division. (laughs) I said, I guess, because when you're competing in bikini, it I'm just being real. It didn't really feel like a bodybuilding competition. I actually had to uh, limit a lot of my bodybuilding in order to fit into this mold of the bikini look. Um, And, you know, no, for example, what I mean by that is my quads are too big for what they want. So I had to really minimize quad workouts, really emphasize glute and hamstring. Um, And then I didn't work my arms at all, like no biceps or triceps for three months over the course of this experiment that I did um, because they were already too big. Right. And so it's fine. Like I understand that, that if you're going to enter in somebody else's world, you're not going to change the rules, but um, that's why it just, I don't know. It doesn't really feel, it felt more like a uh, beauty pageant, (laughs) a body beauty pageant, I guess, than it did a bodybuilding competition, you know, but no, I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad who does bikini, but I, I think they know what I mean. It's, it's not just like build muscle all over. It's that you're looking for a look that looks hot in a bikini basically. Um, and this is just really raw. <laughs> I'm just being real with you guys. You can probably hear in my voice, honestly, like kind of where I'm at. I'm in a little bit of a funk. I'm not going to lie. I'm in a little bit of a weird place. So I am exactly one week out from my show. So I did two shows and they were four weeks apart. I had as reference point, if you're curious, I was 13 and a half percent body fat before I started this prep. So I was already pretty lean and I, um, it was an eight week prep. Uh, for the first show I came in at 10.5% body fat. Um, and for the next one, I actually, um, was driving harder, but I was barely lifting. Cause we were just, honestly, it was like, Hey, if you lose muscle, you lose muscle. Like we're just trying to get, they were just trying to get me, my coach was trying to get me as small as possible for the show. So pretty severe calorie deficit. Um, I was eating about at, at the beginning of the preps, uh, sorry. And then, yeah, to clarify the next show was four weeks later. So it was 12 weeks altogether, this whole experiment. Okay. Um, at the beginning of the preps, I was at like 1500 calories a day. And then as it got closer, I would go down to about 1380. And then I think peak week, I don't even know. Cause he just gave me something specific, but it was very low. You know, it's like a lot of white knuckling at the end of just like mind over matter. Um, and man, where I'm at a week out from this is like, honestly a place that I have I have never been. And what I mean by that is like, okay. So I grew up on the standard American diet, right? Like most of us did, um, processed foods, fast food, all that stuff. And I, I got in shape, uh, I think about seven years ago now. And in all of this seven years that I went from being like probably close to 40% body fat, losing 40 pounds, but also building a ton of muscle, completely changing my physique in all this time, you know, I've, I have never been above 20% body fat. I've always stayed very healthy. Like I enjoy my healthy lifestyle. I love training hard. I love feeling like a bad day in the gym. I love running. I love lifting. I love eating healthy. I'm in a groove. I don't count my food or anything like that, but I eat well. You know, I have my little groove of crock pot chicken and sweet potatoes that I bake ahead of time and veggies ready to go and egg scrambles. And yeah, that's how I live. Just high quality food life. I, 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 almost never eat out. The only time I would ever eat out would be like a for social engagement. I just, there's no, I just, why I got all this yummy stuff at home I can make. Um, that's like higher quality meats and stuff. Um, so that's kind of how I live as some context this week is not how I've been living. And like, 
I knew I was going to come out of this thing with like, oh, sure, you're going to need some time to just like give yourself a break and, and not worry about food and just eat whatever you want. But I didn't really bargain for how it has been this week. Like, usually I'm kind of like a, oh, one day I'll kind of eat whatever's and then just go back into my groove. I'm having a really hard time getting back into that place. Like, um, I tried a couple days ago, like I tried (laughs) to eat some sweet potatoes and I took like one bite and I was like, I freaking can't do this. Like I, so my like, honestly, like all I'm wanting to eat is just like crap, like just standard American, like not super bad. I've been going to like cubbies, which is like, you know, lettuce wrap grass fed burger, which isn't terrible, but it's like, I don't care. Yeah. Bacon, cheese, whatever you want on it. Ranch. Sure. I don't care. And like sweet potato fries dipped in Chipotle ranch. Like it's not terrible, but that is definitely not my normal lifestyle. It is really weird for me to go to cubbies by myself, but it's not even that. It's like, I also find myself being like, Oh, I'm going to go get waffle love after this. Or maybe later, like waffle love is like liege Belgian waffles with like ice cream and whipped cream and stuff on top. Like those kind of thoughts would never even cross my mind normally. Like I'm not, why, what I, even if I went there with my kids, I probably wouldn't eat it like normally, maybe a few bites or whatever. It just normally, it's not that I'm like trying to restrict my food. It's the opposite. It's just like, I'm like, eh, I don't like the results I get in my life when I eat like that. Like I like how I feel and the energy that I feel when I eat well. So like, I just know that stuff's just going to like drag me down and make me feel kind of bliss. So it doesn't appeal to me usually. So the fact that I'm like, driving around and being like, Ooh, what am I going to get next? Like, I'm like, well, dude, what's going on with me? I'm, I'm on the struggle bus <sighs> on top of it. Like i am found myself eating like cereal. <laughs> I don't even, so I don't even let my kids have cereal. We don't do cereal in our house, like box cereal. Yeah. Freaking right. Like I have my limits. We don't do pop tarts and cereal and that kind of crap. Like they eat real food for breakfast. And like, I'm eating that. I, like, I haven't had a box of cereal in my house in, like, at least five years. And I'm, like, eating it every day. And I'm, like, holy shit. Sorry, I was, you guys know I swear. I'm, like, holy shit. Like, no wonder people are so fat. Like, this stuff never fills you up. It's, like, bottomless. I, I'm, like, I can just eat a whole box of this. It just disappears in the thin air. Like, you never get full. It's just, like, all this sugar and chemicals. And, it's, yeah. Oh, my God. And then, um what else? I'm being just totally raw and honest with you guys where I'm at. Um, I've still been going to the gym, but like the, it was interesting the first day back to the gym on Monday, cause I get off the treadmill, do my little walking warm up, and I go to head to the weight section and I'm like, Oh, there's no plan. Oh, I guess I'll just, okay, just do whatever I want. And that felt really weird. And it took me a minute, but I was like, because I'm a trainer, I was like, Ooh, I know. And I planned out this awesome back workout, but I thought, huh, how many people do this, do this competition thing and they're not trainers and they get done. And this feeling of like just being totally lost and aimless and having no plan and nothing to work towards and nothing to do. I was like, no wonder they keep jumping back into this because at least that feels like they're working towards something. It's like that feeling of being like, you're like, you go from the most disciplined you've ever been in your effing life, like next level discipline. <laughs> like I can't even, I can't not put it into words. It is insane. It's like all day, every day it is on your mind. And to go from that level of discipline to feeling like kind of like no plan, no goals, nothing to work towards. It's, it's very uncomfortable. It's like, it, it, yeah, it's kind of a bummer to be honest. And so that's caused me to think a lot professionally. I'm like, Hmm, people need, they need a plan. They need something to be working towards. And it's no wonder so many people get driven into bodybuilding. Cause it's like one of the few outlets they have for something like that in fitness besides like maybe CrossFit or like running, you know, but there aren't that many like general public <sighs> events that people can do that help them have goals in fitness. So I was like, yeah, I see why people get kind of like locked into this thing forever. Um, what else? Gosh. Okay. Let's talk about, and I, I'm just real quick to end that note. I, I'm not out of it yet. Like I'm actually currently driving to Costco right now to go get like my chicken and Greek yogurt and like, man, I haven't had fruit in like months. Cause I couldn't have fruit on this thing. 
guess I'll get some strawberries, like try to bring some healthy joy back into my life, some blueberries, stuff like that. But I'm struggling. It's like literally to the point that like, I just like, I, if it's healthy food, I don't want it. Like, no, no, thank you. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to like find new fun, healthy foods that I enjoy or something. Cause going back to what I normally eat, I think that's the problem too, is that I ate kind of like a competitor diet normally, like potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, chicken, vegetables, eggs, you know, all these same foods. So like now, because I've like basically connected them to like a traumatic experience, which I I don't know how else to put it. Like it was so intense. So it was so hard. I, I know I sound weak saying it. It's kind of embarrassing to admit, but it was like so hard that I feel like traumatized from it a little bit, you know, like it's like, you didn't realize how intense that was until you get out of it. And you're like, holy crap, man, that was brutal. So yeah, I'm just being real. Like I'm, I have, I I wish I, I wanted to wait to share this until I found a way out of this, but I already had scheduled to have this podcast come out. So you guys are just getting right where I'm at. Like I'm not out of it yet. I don't know. Like it's bizarre. It feels like my inner child, like just needs to know that I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want. (laughs) And she's not done knowing that yet. (laughs) That's what it feels like, you know, like it's bizarre. Cause it's like, I can talk about this and I can admit it. And even still I'll be like, okay, yeah. Like just go get like a protein bar or something. But I'm like, no, I want waffles. Yes. And that's so unlike it's the reason it's so shocking is because it's just so unlike me on the regular, like this is not how I think. So it's like, it's really fascinating to me (laughs) to just kind of be the observer of my own thoughts right now. Yeah. And it's just like, I think it's because it pushed me to such an extreme of control that like, I don't want to feel that anymore. Like I, I don't like that. I don't live like that. I don't like controlling all my food and thinking about it that much. So it's like, it's almost like something deep inside of me needs to know that like that it, that I don't have that. Um, I don't have those restrictions. I don't have all that anymore. It's like, I need to like keep proving it to myself, but I'm like, damn, like how long am I going to be proving this to myself? Cause I'm going to gain like 40 pounds <laughs> if, if I keep proving this to myself much longer. Holy cow. Um, so yeah, just being real, that is kind of the journey I'm on right now. And, um, I also wanted to share in this episode, I, I did a post after my second one and I'm, I had this little comment that I said in there that I got a lot of people asking me questions about. So I'll address it. And I said that I was glad that I did the second show because I got slammed in this second show with some of the more dark sides of the industry. And people were like, what do you mean? I'm curious what that meant. <laughs> so I'll tell you guys in this episode. So like, if you, if this is new to you and you didn't follow this journey on my Instagram in a nutshell, like I don't, I have been quite opposed to the bodybuilding competition industry for quite some time because it's very popular here in Utah. And I am tired of seeing people get destroyed from it. I don't know any other way to say it. It just, I like watch people. They're like these like innocent people that come in and they just want to get like all fit and healthy. And they probably have a lot of them have yes, feeling like feelings of not enoughness, worthiness issues. And I think that that's going to heal it for them. And they innocently go into this thing and the, I just see the competition industry, just chew them up and spit them out. And I, they are a wreck. And the reason it bothers me is because I've coached many of them afterwards. And I'm like, dude, these people are in a bad way, like in relationship to their food, in relationship to their bodies. They all think they're fat and they're not. And they all like have like weird binge eating patterns. And they also like, um, a lot of them have like hormone issues and blood, terrible blood work and all of it. I'm like, dude, these poor people, like, and so it was kind of making me angry. I'm not going to lie. Like I would, I would just think like some of the, I mean, I don't want to be disrespectful, but like, it's just like to some of the coaches, I want to be like, can you like show the after the after picture of these people after they gain 50 pounds and they like hate themselves and they're too afraid to go in public without like hoodies on because they hate the way their body looks now. And like, where's the follow-up coaching for these people? And like, I don't know. So I just struggled. (laughs) I'm being super candid in this. Um, so I did this thing as an experiment because I was like, maybe I'm wrong. 
maybe I just had, this has just been my experience, but maybe there's a whole better side to this thing that I'm not seeing. And I also thought if I'm going to keep attracting these clients, then I'm going to need to do it so I can understand exactly what they went through, which as you see is <laughs> what's happening right now. Um, and so I did it, I did it for that. And the, the other reason I did it is cause I had always been curious because I had a good relationship with my body and the way I saw myself and food and just felt free and happy and like no pressure for my body to look any different than it did. Like no like psychotic perfectionism or anything like that. I was like, can you drive yourself to that level when you already feel enough, when you feel good? Like you don't need, like why, you know, it's such an aesthetic sport and you don't have an issue with your aesthetic appearance. Like, can you drive yourself that far just from pure freaking discipline? So I was curious about all those things. And really, truly what drove me the most was I was just like, if I can't get in this mindset all the way, if I can't dive in, then I'm, it's, then it was for nothing because I won't be able to understand people who went through it if I can't become like them. Like, so I really had, that was such a struggle for me. Like I really had to huh, like maneuver my mind into that space. Um, and, and like want it, right? Like drive towards it. Like you become the competitor. It was, it was difficult, but I do feel like I got there. Um, especially on the second one. But what was interesting is when I did the first show, like what I didn't bargain for is you're meeting all these people and they're like such nice people. And you're like, you don't want to be like, you know, (laughs) raining on their parade. Like this is like their life. And so I think because of that, I started to sort of rose colored glasses it a little bit and like give, look for all the good and like, you know, just focus on the good sides of like, this is really great for like discipline and, you know, finding out your excuses and all this stuff. Um, and that's kind of where I landed on after the first show, but the second show, I think cause it was a bigger show and there were like a lot more people and it was a lot more competitive and there was a pro show there too. So amateurs and pros and I don't know. It felt like the universe was just like, Hey, you, before you start rose colored glassesing this whole thing, um, <laughs> here you go. Take, take a look. Um, and it was just like so many conversations that I was like, damn it, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like there's one woman that I talked to backstage area and like, you could just tell that she had an eating disorder, you know? And I just like, my heart broke for her. Cause like we were talking about what we were going to eat after. And she's like, I just want a protein bar. That's all I want. And I was like, Oh, well, like, are you going to get real food too? And she's like, no, I just want that protein bar. And I was like, shit, man, like we're like in the depths of starvation. Okay. (laughs) Like think of the hungriest you've ever been in your whole life and then times that by a month and then say, you're only going to eat a protein bar when you're done. So (laughs) to give you some context, um, and then, and that just broke my heart because I, I realized like how many people are probably in that industry because it's almost like socially acceptable eating disorder. That's what it felt like. Like I was seriously, I was like, if you have an eating disorder, this is going to be your jam. Cause if you love having tons of control over your food, like here's a quote unquote, socially acceptable way to, to justify that basically. <laughs> so they like feel like you're doing a good thing or something. And yeah, I just had my eyes open to how much of that exists. Um, And I've heard some people who compete say things like, if you didn't come into this with an eating disorder, you're probably going to leave one with, leave it with one. I'm like, damn, dude. So that, uh, just seeing all that, you know, like the, the mindsets around food, like I got to see that more the second time around. And I was like, this is not healthy at all. And then here's another example. Like this one lady, she was like so cute and little and tiny. She's 106 pounds. She, she looks so good. She's probably going to listen to this and she's going to know I'm talking to her, talking about her. I hope not. No names. <laughs> Hopefully it's okay sharing this um, anonymously, but uh, I guess to protect privacy a little bit, I won't go into too many details, but basically she was telling me the story of how competing destroyed her family um, for not destroyed her family, but for temporarily. Yeah. Like major upheaval because, um, some idiot coach who didn't know what he was doing at all, put her husband who was competing on steroids and like, didn't even know how to do it. Right. And then he like basically went into like psychosis from it and had to go have years of hormone therapy and, and regular therapy. And I was just like, this makes me so mad, you know, like 
<laughs> this is like a family guy, a dad, husband and, and dad that just like wanted to do this like healthy goal thing. And then his like whole life got ruined. And there are like a million stories like that. So many like divorces and people just kind of like going into like weird, selfish realm of, <laughs> I don't know, just kind of like losing it, kind of falling apart, you know? Um, getting mental health issues. A lot of people I've found out too, a lot of people get on like Adderall or other stimulants so that they can like not have an appetite. And now they've got like freaking addictions and all of it, you know? So I just, so much of that was getting slammed in my face. Um, coaches, I heard a coach saying about his client who is nine, a woman who was 9% body fat that she needs to come in leaner next time and seeing the look of like heartbreak on her face, just this like total exasperation. Like, how am I going to do that? Like, but like, okay, I can do it coach. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, you know, like I just saw so much of that this time. And I don't know. It's like, (sighs) I was trying so hard to like see the good, honestly, but I'm like, overall, I can't, I can't, I can't say that. I can't, I can't support it. Honestly. Like, if you wanted to ask me, like, would I ever recommend for one of my children to do that? I will, I will, like, kill somebody. <laughs> I'm like, that's the level of, like, hell no, hell no, or one of my kids going to do that. Like, I'm not sending my kids to the freaking lion's den, <laughs> the wolf den, just get freaking torn to shreds. I'm like, good luck. Because, yeah, I just don't see anybody coming out of that in a good way. <laughs> like, sure, you feel on top of the world when you're super crazy shredded and you're getting all this attention, but what about after? It's not good. It's not pretty. I don't see any, I don't know anybody that I see come out of that and it like built their life. I feel like they had to rebuild their life after. So I can't support it. I don't, I don't, I don't like what it's become. It's like watching the pro show too, like, seeing these guys and they all look so incredible. Like, um, I was watching the men's physique and they're like humongous men's physique is supposed to be like the board short, like beach boy model kind of look. And they're just like jacked. They look like little mini bodybuilders, you know, like not really that many. I mean, they're huge. And like, I was like, okay, how do they set themselves apart? They're going to have to go more extreme. And same with the bikini, the pro bikini show. I'm like, these women look absolutely insane. And they're not even placing like these. I'm like, you're like, I don't even understand how you're human. Like, and you're not even placing. So what does that push you to do? You have to just go more and more extreme. (sighs) So yeah, I'd say I'm I'm just, I'm just being like ridiculously honest. I, 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 that's just my experience of it is like, I would never recommend any friend or family member ever to do that. And the whole time I was doing it, I just kept thinking, God, it doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be this hard. Is this what people think being healthy is like? They have to just be freaking miserable to the point they can't even think straight. And like, I'm go. I, there were a couple of times I went to bed. I was so hungry. I just couldn't sleep. I couldn't fall asleep for like, I usually fall asleep really fast. I could not fall asleep for like 45 minutes just because my stomach hurt so bad. And it like, my mind was like, just so hungry. It was like horrible, you know? And I'm like, this, this doesn't have to be that hard. And it's, it's so restrictive. I think that's why I'm in the place that I know that's why I'm in the place that I'm in with food right now. Cause it's so restrictive. And what I try to always live by before this is like, no, like you can have whatever you want, but like you choose things that fill your body and fuel your body. And yeah, like sometimes you're not going to eat all the time when you're hungry because you're a grown up and you recognize that that's good for you, you know, but it's not like to crazy extremes. It doesn't have to be like that. And yeah, I think it just really messes up people's relationship with food, honestly. So yeah, that's been my experience. And I'm like, I'm currently in that. I'm one of them. I'm like one of those people right now. It has messed up my relationship with food a little bit. I'm sitting now in the parking lot of Costco. You ever go in there and get some chicken. And I'm like, you can do this. You can eat normal food again. It's like, shit, this is so unlike me, you know? So this has been the one part of it that like, I'm like, man, it kind of got me. <laughs> So hopefully, I hope that, you know, by next Friday when this episode airs that I'm like, 
better and can maybe share that on social or something. But I'll be real with you guys on where I'm at with it. It's it's going to be a little interesting journey here. I hope it's almost over. <laughs> I hope I get back to normal soon. <laughs> oh, not to mention, last thing, if you see me on social right now, like I, I not only, I'm sure I, I'm definitely up some weight because I've been eating all the things, but I'm also retaining water like crazy because of all the, the water manipulation they do at the end. Like I've never experienced anything like this in my life. Like it's felt like my legs are going to explode out of my skin. <laughs> like it is like that much. It's so insane. Like my hands, face, everything, like just retaining water like crazy. So I've heard that that goes away about a week to a week and a half after. So hopefully that's over soon. But yeah. <laughs> It does not exactly make you feel like in the most wonderful place ever after a show when you're like, you've been like the leanest you've ever been. And then you're just like retaining water like crazy, eating all the junk food. I'm like, oh my gosh, what has happened to me? I'm falling apart. (laughs) So yeah, there it is. (laughs) Just being real. So, um, I'll keep you guys posted. Um, you know, follow me on Instagram. Hopefully you guys follow me on Instagram. That's where I share most of my stuff. It's coach coach Tara Garrison T A R. well you guys know <laughs> it's on the episode title thing but um yeah that's I'll, I'll keep sharing where I'm at with this but that's been my experience <sighs> am I glad I did it yes because all learning is good I love learning I love I you know the human experience not always easy <laughs> ever <laughs> um easy but yeah it's definitely you know all learning is good and I know I can get I know I can get past this I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad I experienced it. Cause now I know, you know, like I didn't realize I, I'm like, I know it cannot be just me. I cannot be the only person ever who's <laughs> had this happen after a show. So now I know what that's like. So I can have more empathy and it drives me also to find solutions. Um, I, I keep asking myself out loud. I'm like, okay, what, what are you getting out of the waffle? Like, why, why are you doing that? What, what does it mean to you? And I'm like, freedom, comfort, you know, and I'm trying to get it, tap into all the emotions that, that I'm getting out of that. Cause I know that we don't do anything unless we're getting something out of it. Right. So I'm trying to figure out like what I'm getting out of it and what the mindsets are deep below the surface. That's causing me to behave like that, you know? So it drives me to be, find those solutions so that I can share those with others. So if you're interested, keep following my journey on this and thank you so much for listening. I'll go ahead and wrap this up and, um, yeah, I'll see you back next week with, uh, our next guest. Hey, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Inside Out Health Podcast. I hope this episode served as inspiration and something that you needed to hear in your life. If you have a friend or family member that you think would benefit from this episode, please share it with them. And also please subscribe. I have so many more amazing guests coming. I have just been so gifted and honored to meet so many incredible health professionals in my career, and I cannot wait to share their messages with you guys. So please subscribe. And if you could be so kind as to rate my show, I would really appreciate it. This This podcast is honestly an intuitive call to me to help spread goodness to the world. And so if you guys can help me do that, I would really appreciate it. If you want more info on this guest, pop over to my website, check out my podcast section, and you can get links to everything we talked about in the show um, and find out more about this guest and what, where you can go from here. Make sure you're also following me on Instagram. Uh, That is my most active platform. You can find me at coach Tara Garrison. You can also find me on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. Everything is coach Tara Garrison across the board. And then yeah, if you want to send me a message, guys and let me know other guests or other topics you want to hear on the show please let me know I am here to serve you so I would love to hear from you would love your feedback on the show and if you share any of these episodes please tag me on social media it's coach Tara Garrison